Hello again, everyone. D Fleck here for But Fair Gaming. Wanted to bring you a video. This is going to be a Dragonflight 10.1 Season 2 Mythic Plus tier list. So I didn't want to do it before 10.1 came out because they were doing nerfs up until uh, basically the day 10.1 came out. So this is my prediction on where things are going to land. And I'm going to base it on a few different things, tier sets. I'm going to base it on uh, what I think is going to be strong and what I feel that hopefully doesn't get nerfed. And we'll just start with the way they have them here. Vengeance Demon Hunter got buffed in the last week. It is, it's okay spec. Um, it has some great utility. It has, it's a pretty, like, it's one of my favorite specs to play. I, I enjoy my Vengeance Demon Hunter. I don't think it performs as well as some of the other ones. And I think it's going to be okay. Uh, the single target damage is kind of lackluster. You don't have the same defenses as some of the other tanks, but they did do a lot of change to the healing, which was beneficial. For Vengeance, current state, it's, it's kind of high B, low A. Uh, it has great raid utility. It's got great, sorry, not raid, great uh, mythic plus utility. It's got great movement. It is, it's a fun tank, but it just is lacking compared to some of the others. Now, getting on to, you know, anyone who's been playing well the last season already knows where this is going to go. This is Prot Paladin. It is just running rampant right now. They did not nerf it. It actually got it, well... They didn't nerf it much, put it that way. It was a tiny, tiny nerf, but they did get a little buff to Word of Glory, so Pop Paladin is still going to be an A-class. It is a great tank to play. If you do a lot of pugs, it can help out in pugs. It is just, it just has utility. It's got a B-res. It brings an aura. Like It's a great, great tank. It is phenomenal Mythic Plus. It has a ton of interrupts, short CDs for your interrupts. Good good defensives, not the best for defenses, but good defensives, but a very, very good tank. It is phenomenal right now. I I don't know if it will go unscathed uh, throughout the season two without getting nerfed, but for now, it is definitely an S tier spec. Druid, on the other hand, Druid was C tier last time. Druid is, Druid just lacks defensives. It's Damage is unbelievable. Like, it is phenomenal damage profile. Uh, the defensives it has are kind of lacking against steady magic damage all the time. Uh, so that is a problem. Uh, they do have great utility. Uh, and they are they are a fairly forgiving tank to play, too. I'm going to move it up from C. It's not C tier anymore. It, it definitely is B. You can do great with Druid. Uh, I main Druid for a lot in Shadowlands. And I did play it quite a bit in season one, but nothing like I wasn't pushing crazy keys on Druid. I was just messing around with it. I did come out with some fairly, really good builds for it. There is a raise build that's just does incredible damage and healing. Um, but you do you, like you do lose some. It, it's just the magic damage that holds this tank back. Uh, it has great utility. You know, you have Typhoon. You have Vortex, you have Interrupt, you have Stun. Like, it is very great, but magic damage will crush your Druid very, very quickly. Prot Warrior. For me, personally, it's my least favorite tank. It did phenomenal Season 1. It was an S-tier Season 1. Uh, it's still going to be very good in Season 2, but it, it is going to drop. And again, this is the tough spot. Like, all tanks are going to be viable, but Prot Warrior... <sighs> I'm going to say low A, high B. So whether I put it, it's going to be slightly, ever so slightly ahead of Demon Hunter. Like I, it's pretty much on par, I would say, with Demon Hunter. Uh, it is, it's a good tank. It's a, like you can do very well with Prot Warrior. It's, I don't, it's just, it is my, I'm not going to, it's my least favorite tank to play. I play them all and that is by far my least favorite tank to play. I think it uh, it's gone down slightly from season one. I don't think it like it's a bad tank. It's still a very very good tank, but for me it just I don't know. It's just lacking something, and I don't know what it is for me. But it is uh, it it 
high B, low A. It's still a very, very good tank. Don't get me wrong. Blood DK, on the other hand. Blood DK, you know, it used to be B tier. It's always damaged. Everyone says it's a little low. I don't find it that much lower. Yes, compared to Guardian Druid, it can be a little bit, but it's not crazy low. Uh, and again, every tier, Blood DK just kind of creeps and creeps and creeps because of um, because of the power creep. It's going all the way up to uh, to low S. Low S tier for the Blood DK. It has some great defensives, some abilities that you can cheese other mechanics. And for certain dungeons, it will come in very, very useful. Uh, and also, if you select um, uh, Dark Iron Dwarf to get rid of the bleed effect, it will also be very, very good for your BDK. So... BDK, uh, the Torn BDKs are really good too because that War Stomp just gives them an extra uh, stun ability. But I am putting BDK up. It's gonna, it's one of the hardest tanks to play correctly, but played correctly, you can do unbelievable things with a BDK. Uh, they help out your group a ton. You can pull mobs in with your grip. No other tank can grip in like that. Um, it's just really good for casters casting on you. You have AMS, AMZ, like it's, <laughs> it is very, very utility useful, but I'm moving it up. It is, there is a bit of a divide here, uh, between prop Paladin and BDK, but BDK is a very, very solid tank right now. And it's in a very good spot. Uh, the tier set is lackluster, but it's still a pretty good tier set for it. Um, yeah, it is. It's in a good spot. Brewmaster Monk. Now, this is going to be a controversial pick for a lot of people. And I don't... It's... You know what? The damage profile is great. The self-healing is a lot better. And it's actually going to jump to A tier. Uh, it was very low at the beginning of the season. But Brewmaster isn't played by a ton of people. It's it's still a very self-sustained -sustain tank. Uh, the changes they have made do help it out a lot and i know a lot of people disagree but it is it's a very good spot right now maybe not in the best spot it's ever been but it's in a very good spot uh you have great mobility great utility you can do really decent uh self-healing uh you have the absorb and the stagger and the damage profile is good i would put it up there as one of the hardest tanks to play correctly though it has a, out of all the tanks, it has the most buttons, bar none, like not even close. Brewmaster Monk has a crazy amount of buttons to uh, to use. And it is, out of all my tanks, the only one that fills up like three bars. It's crazy, crazy, crazy tank for the amount of buttons it has. But if used correctly, this tank has the utility. This tank has the damage. This tank has the defensives. This tank has the mitigations. Like it is, it just has it there that it is an A tier tank. That is going to be my predictions for season two. As long as nothing gets nerfed uh, anymore, now that ten point one is out, season two starts in a couple days. This is what I am looking at, and this is you know, no tank is going to be a bad choice for season two, but I think those will be your top three, your bottom three in that order. Let me know if you agree down below. Let me know uh, if you think one should move, two should move. If you think uh, this is pretty accurate, leave a comment. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. This was Deflect, Firm But Fair Gaming. We'll see you in the next video.